Uh, thank you very much, President Reagan. Mrs. Reagan, members of the uh, cabinet, distinguished guests, my friends. On behalf of the 50 million people of the Philippines, Mrs. Marcos and I express our gratitude for your warm welcome to Washington and to the United States of America. This great and beautiful city that is one of the few cities that was built as a capital for a great nation is indeed, as has been written, the key to knowing the secret of America. And this house of the American people, an American frontier that never vanishes, your beautiful city of its, with its grand memorials, its monuments, its walks, is indeed a city that memorializes the great achievements of your people for the past two centuries. But more than that, it keeps offering to the enterprising and the talented, the courageous and the strong the rewards of effort and of initiative. At the same time, as I stand here on American soil, I realize that I stand on what may be the center of the government of the United States of America, here where, as I have often stated, the future is being born. The future is being born depending upon the man who is in the White House. And the man who is in the White House today certainly is creating a new future for our world. For Mr. President, I come from that part of the world wherein the poorest of the world's population live. I come from that part of the world that cherishes an image of America with its ideals, its dreams, its illusions. I come from the Philippines, a part of Asia, which uh, has been molded along the principles of American democracy. We learn to love these ideals and principles. And we lost a million of our people fighting for them in the last war. We have always stood by these ideals. We shall continue to do so, whatever may be the cost, at the risk of our fortunes, our lives, but more important of all, our honor. We stand for the ideals of democracy that is our legacy from the United States of America. I did not come to burden you further with additional problems, Mr. President. For I know that as I have said in many a speech before my own people and before the world, fate and destiny has decreed that the United States of America be the trustee of modern civilization against the threat of a possible second dark ages. And America cannot fail. And therefore, we, the Filipino people, come and bring to you a prayer that God and His divine providence may grant you guidance 
strengthen both your heart and hand so that that hand may be strong on the lever of power and save our humanity. If America fails, then the world is lost. And thus, Mr. President, I can assure you that throughout all of Asia, there is nothing but a reservoir of goodwill for you, the American people, and the United States of America. Once again, may I say thank you for your warm welcome and your hospitality, which I know we will never be able to reciprocate. Thank you.
Before I say what I was going prepared to say here, I think that all of us ought to join in a happy birthday. The 20, there is a period in which you can tell a lady's age when it's Irene Marcos and it's her 22nd birthday. Oh. Happy birthday. But tonight, we welcome old and good friends to the White House in a visit symbolic of the superb relationship between our two countries. It's a nostalgic occasion for us as well. Nancy and I often think of our 1969 visit to Manila when we first experienced that unexcelled Philippine hospitality as the guests of our guests here tonight. And the birthday girl was quite young and small <laughs> at that time. Many things have changed in both countries since that time, but one thing remains constant, the basic nature of the Filipino-United States friendship. It remains solid. Both countries have worked hard over the years to maintain excellent cooperation in defense, foreign policy, refugee matters, economic assistance, and many other areas. And I pledge to you, President Marcos, that the United States will do its share to strengthen those ties in the 1930s. In the 1980s. I've been doing a little reminiscing at the table, forgive me. Yes, 1930s was my first job. <laughs> we value the friendship you know, of the Republic of the Philippines for many reasons, Mr. President. Our intertwined histories during the first 50 years of this century left its imprint on your institutions of government, your educational system, and your public services, such as public health, and the widespread use of the English language as a result of that era. So is your flourishing free enterprise system. As important as our shared histories are our shared strategic interests which span this entire century. In World War II, Filipinos and Americans fought and died together. And you yourself, Mr. President, played an unforgettably heroic part in that conflict. Coming out of that war, your generation and mine fully understood the need for collective security arrangements. Unfortunately, some of today's young people blessed by decades of relative peace may not have this understanding. I think it's our duty to impart our historical experience to them. Today, a strong defense alliance is a major factor in contributing to the security of the Philippines and to the maintenance of peace and security in 